You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the 7-Minute Security Podcast. My name is Brian Johnson, and I am very excited to be continuing our series on pen testing the OWASP Juice Shop. Now, this is part three in the series, so if you haven't checked out parts two and one, go back and watch and listen to those. Those are episodes 230 and 231. But I'm just going to hop right in here, and we're going to try to do some more damage to this uh, scoreboard, get us uh, some more points and I'm actually going to kind of backtrack a bit and do some basic enumeration that arguably I should have done first, or that maybe you should do first when uh, pen testing a web application. So I'm going to use a tool called Derb. And one of the things Derb is good for is kind of brute forcing the discovery of content that we might not see or might not be directly linkable if we're just to open up the site in a web browser. So the format I'm using is derb space the site colon a port and I'm also adding a proxy flag there so that I can actually push those requests right through burp. So if I want to go back and look through burp history um, you know for any reason later it bam it's right there in burp's log as well. So let's take a look at what derb found. It looks like it found a slash API with some content there. It also found, let's see, uh, slash APIs, plural. That's good. And what else got a code 200 here? It looks like there is a slash FTP. Now, if we go there, we will see what looks to be some perhaps forgotten files. And if you take a look at the scoreboard, we need to unlock these. These are part of our challenges. Look, a salesman's forgotten backup file, a developer's forgotten backup file. So let's see if we can open these up directly and uh, get some more green on the board here. Okay, the acquisitions file opened up without issue. It looks like the legal markdown file opens no problem as well. However, we'll see now as we try to open the coupons file, we have got a problem. The site only allows .md and PDF files to be downloaded. So what do we do about that? Well, one thing we can do is use a trick I learned in the OSCP training called no byte injection, which I've got a definition for here on the uh, OWASP page on the topic. But essentially, in, in layman's terms, which is the terms I understand, it's a way to get access to unauthorized files by essentially fooling the web server as to what file you are actually requesting. So let's see what this looks like with burp. So I'm going to take my original request for that coupons file and I'm going to send it to repeater so that if need be I can make the request over and over again and, and just slightly modify the request each time. So I'm going to try to use percent zero zero here to fool the server into thinking I'm requesting a PDF. And if that doesn't work, which it didn't, I'm going to try percent twenty five hundred, which is the URL encoded version. And it looks like the server's been fooled, and there are my coupon codes. So let's punch in our modified URL right here into our browser, and get this file downloaded. And there we go. We've got them for later decrypting on another challenge, which uh, we'll tackle probably next time. But for now, let's try to apply that same logic to any other files that we have problems downloading. Okay, it looks like we got access to that PDF just fine. Let's try Easter uh, dot g. Let's add the percent twenty five hundred and pretend it's a PDF. And it looks like the server is okay. 
with us pulling down a quote-unquote PDF version. Let me get this renamed and take a look at Easter it dot And oh, it looks like we've got a challenge within a challenge. We'll probably come back to that one as well. That's going to need a little bit more of our. It's going to need a little bit more TLC. But let's just grab any other files. Looks like there's one more package dot json dot back. Let's try our percent twenty five hundred and stick a PDF extension on it. And Shizingo, we have gotten all the files from the slash FTP folder, which is crantastic. All right, let us take a look at how our scoreboard is shaking out. We're making some pretty decent progress. As you'll see, we got, what, three or four challenges accomplished uh, with those last few steps. We got a confidential document, a developer's backup file, salesman's forgotten backup file, and the Easter egg. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're kicking some tail. I like it. Well, what I'd like to do with the last few minutes we have is attempt some SQL injection in the juice shop search box. So just to kind of get things started, I, I'm just going to type a, a bogus search query here just so we have something and kind of know what the, the query result looks like. And I'm going to use burp again to identify potential SQL injections. Um, but before we can do that, I have to back up a bit and tell you about the B App Store, which you will find under the Extender tab in Burp. There's the B App Store. And there's all these wonderful little modules that people have made. Uh, some you will find are only available in the paid version of Burp. For example, we've got one here called Burp Hash, which requires paid version of Burp. Another one that I use regularly that is a, a really nice time saver is retire.js, which looks for uh, vulnerable JavaScript libraries. That also requires the paid version. But one module that does not require the, the, the paid version of Burp is CO2, which you'll be able to install using an install button there, and then the CO2 tab pops up on the top of Burp. So let's go into our HTTP history and let's look at that search query I just did and we're going to right click it and we're going to send to SQL Mapper. So what the CO2 module is going to do for us is allow us to fine-tune a SQL map query and it's going to tell us all the flags and extra commands we need to feed it so we don't have to be SQL map command line gurus which I really like. So see I, I, I raised the detection to 2 and it updated the flags up top. Uh, let me see what else. I'm going to test the parameter of Q, which is the search query parameter. And you see there it's updating the command on the fly. And uh, we know this is SQLite, so let's stick that in there too and see how now it says DBMS is SQLite up top. And I think I'm going to leave everything else the same. Uh, although actually if I wanted to proxy my SQL map work through Burp, I could do that too. So let's copy the whole command, which does not include the SQL map executable. So we need to type SQL map, then paste our command, and we'll hit enter. And let's see what SQL map finds. So it looks like it was able to identify a union query where we could potentially extract more information out of the database. So I'm going to save that for later. Uh, but what I wanted to demonstrate is that what I would normally do from this point is I would send more aggressive SQL map queries to get information out of the database. So I might just tick the uh, dump option here to just basically say, hey, SQL map, give me everything out of this database if you can. But you will see that when I do that, watch the bottom of the screen here, bam, did you see that on the bottom uh, console there? My juice shop has poop the bed. So what are we going to do from here? Well we could certainly use SQL map and fine-tune our queries a little bit to maybe more gently extract little bits of data at a time from the database and, and keep our our docker container stable but uh, what I'm going to show you starting with next episode 
is um, how to manually take that query and just using the browser and the search box we're going to get all the information we want out of the database without crashing it ideally <laughs> so please stay tuned lots more to come we are like i said we are not going to stop until this juice shop belongs to us so uh, join me next week for part four of this series and uh, if i can do anything for you or you have any questions my contact info will follow shortly I've been Brian Johnson. Uh, this is the 7-Minute Security Podcast, and I hope you have a blessed week. Thanks. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7-Minute Security, a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics, such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us. 